All right, yo, 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 welcome back to another episode of the Dear Fathers Podcast. I'm your co-host, James Meeks, and I have my homeboy, my partner here, Jesse Alex. What's good, family? How you doing? Man, I'm good, man. I'm excited about today's convo. I always say music is therapy, so to get to talk to somebody, you know, who craves music about who they are, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely, man. I'm definitely excited about today's impactful conversation. Uh, we'd like to welcome an amazing father, mental health advocate, and Dreamville recording artist, Lute, to the Dear Fathers Podcast. Lou, how you feeling today, bro? And I appreciate that, man. That was a, that was a fire intro, but I, I'm good, man. I'm hanging in there. That's dope, man. That's dope, man. So like, as we talked about, you know, before we jumped on the camera, man, with us, dear fathers, we all about, you know, changing the narrative and telling great stories about black fatherhood. Um, and we love to feature, you know, uh, men as such as yourself who have been very successful in your life in terms of your career path and what you're working on, but also have a whole different element about you being a father that people don't probably tap into when they talk to you. So right. to kind of get people in the audience introduced to who you are, man, like, let's take it back to your upbringing. Like, tell us about your your relationship with your parents and specifically your relationship with your father. Um, So I, I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I grew up with my mom. My mom and my grandma basically raised me. Uh, my dad was, a, my, my dad was, he was, he was around. He, I feel like my dad, well, at least growing up now, uh, I feel like, you know, my dad did what he could at the time. Uh, my dad passed in October of last year. So, um, for me, it was kind of like, I was always trying to figure out the relationship between, uh, me and my dad and, you know, trying to develop that closeness even after I, um, you know, after I became like a, a, a man, basically like from, from growing up from what I knew of him as a child to being like 18 and, and older, you know, just trying to figure out that relationship. And, um, so after being a dad, it's just, you know, I have certain things where it's like, um, it, it, it I don't know, it, it kind of changed your perspective when you have a, when you have a child and, and you realize how you know, you were raised or whatever, but I, I felt like my, I had a great upbringing, especially uh, with my mom and my, and my grandma. And I just always had that struggle of trying to figure out that relationship between me and my dad. That, that's a great point, man. And, um, and something that Jesse and I often talk about, you know, collectively together, but then also with our guest is, um, we talk about, you know, giving, giving people grace, right? Mm -hmm. And I wanna know, like, specifically when you think about you know, your relationship with your dad growing up and then you becoming a father, like, mm -hmm. did you find yourself giving him grace when you became a father and you started to realize like, man, I didn't really know what he was going through. Honestly, I, 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 did, I did, I gave him, I gave, I, I mean, I, I feel like I always gave my dad a certain grace. And then it was times where I, I kind of, I, I held him accountable for certain situations and stuff like that. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, damn, realizing what my parents had to go through and then now reaching that age, it's like, damn, that was kind of tough. You know what I'm saying? Then having a kid, it's like, you know, you start to realize, um, you start to realize certain things, but it's, uh, I don't know, it's still, it's still hard because it's still like a lot of questions that I had that I, I wasn't, you know, that I, I didn't get quite get the answers to, but now I feel like I, I'm in a space now where I feel like I don't really need those answers. It's just me trying to be a better father and a better human being, a better man for myself and my daughter and the people around me. And, um, but I, um, I appreciate my dad a lot though. I don't, you know, I, I know my, my dad loved me. Um, it's just my, my dad wasn't, was, I, he wasn't in my life as much as I would like him to be. Yeah. Yeah. You know? nah, that makes sense, man. I definitely appreciate your transparency coming from somebody and myself who was raised basically by my mom and my grandma, right. just like you. And like mm -hmm. I said, before we got on this call, my dad not really being around and mm -hmm. me not really knowing 50% who I, who, who, who I was, you know what I'm saying? Or who I he was, he was, he was around, he was there. He just didn't really, he didn't uh, raise me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain, but he wasn't <laughs> like, I don't know. It, it's so, it's so hard to explain, but it's just like, I, I still had those, those answers growing up. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it was certain things that I, I I needed in certain spaces where it's like, damn, I, I I wish I had my dad in those spaces. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of times that come from that, them old school parents just not opening up yeah. and talking about a lot of yeah. things. Right? Like, yeah, yeah. So that's probably really what that was. And let me ask you this, man. Like you know, you know, you being a, a kid growing up, you know, a lot of times our parents want us to, you know, go to college, get degrees, be doctors, be lawyers, whatever the case may be. How did your parents feel about you becoming a music artist or being into music? Like, what was that like? Man, to be honest, um, my, my parents didn't even know. 
um, I I dropped out of high school. And well, at first I got expelled and um, I realized that um, in order for me to in order for me to get back on the right track, I would have to get held back again because of my uh, suspension. So I ended up dropping out to go to CP to get the credits, but I ended up dropping out of that too. So my mom was kind of like really disappointed in the decisions I was making at the time. And um, so for me to tell my mom that like, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm about to start rapping. I felt like that would, that would give her uh, even more reason to be like you you wasting your time so I didn't tell my mom that I I was uh doing music until I got signed because I felt like I needed I needed something I needed something to back me up to you know what I mean like if I told her I was rapping I needed something to back me up with that I can't just be like yo I'm, I'm out here rapping with my friends she'd be like well, what the hell are you doing <laughs> you know what I'm saying but my well, mom talk my about mom, that though so what 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 age were you when you got when you got expelled I was 17. 17? Okay. Yeah. I was 17 when I got expelled uh, and I dropped out. But funny enough, like my mom and my dad really supported my musical journey though. When after I got signed, they they was really one of my biggest supporters. That's what I was gonna meet my I was gonna see my dad at the uh, I was gonna see my dad at his apartment. And you know, I'll come through and all his friends will be like, yo, man, your dad talk about you all the time, man. We, we be seeing you on TV and, and you know, your dad real proud of you. So that that always made me feel good when I would go over there and hear stuff like that. That's that's really dope, man. And I think, you know, especially for that journey, because I can I can understand the apprehension. A lot of times parents, you know, they don't want to hear when a kid oh, is yeah, into the my arts. Mom, you know, my <laughs> mom wanted me to go to college. My mom wanted me, she had all these expectations for me. But I think when you when you start growing up and you start realizing like, there's a decision that I got to make for myself. You know, at that time when everybody wanted me to go back to school, I wasn't ready to go back to school. You know, it was, uh, I remember one time my aunt was telling me like, you know, sometimes you got to make decisions for you, you know, and nobody else going to live your life but you. So you got to figure out what you want out of this and you got to figure out what you're able to do. And you do that. And I, I, I took those words of advice, you know. Yeah, nah, and that, that's amazing advice because at the end of the day, we all get one life to live and ultimately we got to be happy and satisfied with it. Otherwise, like, you, you're never right, going to yeah, find I, that. You know, I can't live for everybody else, not even my parents. And so I just felt like I just had to make certain decisions for myself and I had to figure the, I had to figure my solutions out, you know, the solutions to my problems or whatever. I had to figure those out for myself. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So one of the things, man, um, Jesse and I are, are big, you know, just Dreamville fans. Um, and have been for some time, and we have been vibing to your music. Um, and one of the questions we wanted to ask you was, uh, and I, I have thoughts, but I want to hear what, you, what your answer is first. Like, uh, who inspired you musically? Like, who did you look up to that you kind of felt like, man, like I saw them doing it, and that made me want to be an artist too? You want to be honest? Um, ODB and Andre 3000, like those were two people that I looked up to growing up and was like, bruh, those, those are two people that made me realize being yourself is key. Yeah, and it's funny that you say that. Well, one, I say I would have never guessed ODB, even though no, I love nobody ODB. ever does. <laughs> when I say when, when people ask me who my top five and ODB is like my first, no, everybody nobody really expects that. But I just feel like ODB was the most authentic uh, human being that we we've gotten. You know what I'm saying? Like he was authentically himself. Yeah, he he definitely was. But I will say that I I told Jesse that because I'm a big Outcast fan. So I was like. He reminds me of Outkast. I'm, I, I wonder if that was his inspiration growing up. Oh but yeah, I I'm definitely just, got Outkast definitely. vibes from you. Yeah, 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 for sure. Nah, that's dope, for man. Sure. Like, like James said, we love your music, man. So, like, I heard snippets in, in past interviews, man. You talked about working at Walmart, Target, the uh -huh. airport, etc. Yep. You know, before getting signed. But take us back to December 2015. Um, you know, when you officially signed to Dreamville, what was that feeling like for you? To be honest, man, that that shit was um, so surreal. Like even even in that time, I I would wake up and be like, "Bro, did that did that even happen?" And I would check my socials and I would check my phone. I'm like, "Damn, that shit happened!" Like and to this day, I'm still trying to figure out, like, "Damn, bro, like how did I even how did I even get to this point?" Because I had been doing everything like everybody else, and I've been on the grind like everybody else. And you know, I didn't. To be honest, I didn't really have a plan. I just knew that. Music is something that I wanted to do, and that was my passion, and I was gonna figure it out either way. But I didn't necessarily have a plan for it, you know. Mm -hmm. I just knew that I, I had what it took. Mm -hmm. Just didn't know where to take that shit. So for that right. to happen for me, and I get signed, and 
and I don't know, man, I'm, I'm still to this day, because a lot of people ask me, like, bro, how did you get to this point? And I'm like, shit, I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, now, you you uh, growing up in North Carolina, like, was it an aspiration for you to get signed up to Dreamville or get on Cole's radar, being that, you know, y'all from, you know, the same parts? I just think that was, it was just a crazy coincidence that it happened. To me, me personally, I was just wanting to get my foot in the door regardless. Um, who it was, um, it didn't matter, but the fact that it was Dreamville was just, it, it, it was it was perfect. You know what I'm saying? It was almost like that shit was just destined to happen because even being on the label and seeing how the label works or whatever, it's like, I wouldn't want to been nowhere else to be real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think it's, it was divine timing, and um, you know, just yeah. it, it all made sense for the for the uh the stars to align the way it did. So, in talking about your growth as an artist, man, like, you know, how would you describe your growth from twenty fifteen to twenty twenty one when you put out uh Gold Mouth? Like, if you were describe that in one word, like, what would that be? Transparency. Mm. Mm. I feel like I'm a more. Uh, I feel like everything that I've been through up until this point and my music has allowed me to be a little more transparent. Cause to be honest, in real life, I'm an introvert. I'm very closed off. And somehow in between there, in order to get people to understand who I am a little more, I felt like it was key for me to be a little more transparent, whether that was in my music or just me as a person, was it just come out a little more of my shell. And so I, I really feel like uh, musically and and mentally, I, I've been a little more transparent. So I, to describe that in one word, transparency easily comes to mind. Nah, I, I love that, man. And full transparency on my end, like recently tapping into your music, like your, your solo projects. This was my first time doing it recently. But as I dove back into the Dreamville catalog, you were on some of like my favorite songs. <laughs> like, oh. like, Oh, the dream oh, <laughs> catalog. So it was dope to dive into who you were as an artist individually once I do dove in because I could relate a lot to what you were saying in your music. Mm -hmm. I'm an introvert as well. Uh, I suffer from anxiety and depression at times. And like we talked about before we started recording, you know, our platform, uh, you know, is big on mental health and the mental health straight mental health space with our straight mental initiative so talk about like you know in your music you talk about mental health dealing with anxiety how long have you had these feelings of like anxiousness and you know had these you know mental health like thoughts and like why do you feel it's important for us as black men to be mindful of that aspect of our lives um i feel like i've as far as anxiety goes i feel like i've i've had anxiety for as long as i can remember um i i had open heart surgery when I was like two, maybe three and a half. Um, so after the procedure, I feel like the way that I was raised in that, I feel like that kind of really, um, I feel like that's where a lot of my anxiety stemmed from. Cause there was a lot of things that, you know, people thought that I couldn't do or that I wasn't supposed to do uh, as far as like my heart condition. But as far as like depression, I don't, I don't know when that shit started or when that popped up, but it, it definitely did. And um, I just feel like it's really important because sometimes when we're dealing with our anxiety and depression, um, we get to a point where we don't really know how to communicate that. And it's been, it took me a long time to even realize what anxiety even was mm -hmm. and, or depression. Cause it was sometimes where I thought that I was dealing with my anxiety and had no idea that it was depression. And, you know, um, anxiety and depression is kind of like, they kind of like cousins, but you can't really, you can't, what you would use for anxiety, you can't really use for depression. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's really important for us, especially as black men, to really um, gauge our, you know, our traumas and what we're going through and why we're, because we sometimes we don't even know that our traumas is, is really the reason why our actions is our action. You know what I'm saying? Or why we do certain things. And it stems from your traumas and, and your anxieties and stuff. So to figure that out and to be able to communicate that, um, I, I feel like it just helps us navigate life a lot easier. If that makes any kind of sense. I know I, sometimes I feel like I'll be blabbering, but yeah. I just feel like we tackle what our, what makes us anxious and our traumas and, and stuff like that. I feel like it'll help us easily navigate life in spaces that we um our most uncomfortable navigating mm -hmm. no you make perfect sense man and you know I, again appreciate you open up about this because a lot of times you know it's, it's hard for us as black men to talk about it that's why we started this platform to yeah. build 
safe spaces for us to just be open about our feelings, you know, what we go through, um, you know, what we're dealing with. And you being a music artist, people on the outside looking in, you know, they hit your Instagram, verify, you got all these hundreds of thousands of followers, you know, they think, you know, you're just successful and, uh, you know, living your best life. And on uh, Gold Mouth, on one of the songs, you said something like, um, you know, I, I just want to build, but shit never lasts. Is it me uh, or all shit from my past or something like mm-hmm. that? Like, Break yeah. down that line because most people see you as being a successful person, like, you know, but you also still deal with things. So like, how do you, you know, kind of, you know, form that balance to where, you know, getting people to like humanize just who you are? Is it just all through your music or do you do anything outside of that? Nah, funny enough, like in order for me to be transparent at times, there were things where I had to hold myself accountable and recognize what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So in order for me to even be able to talk about certain things that I'm talking about, like I had to hold myself accountable for my actions and things that I had been through. And um, yeah, for me, it's not even just about music. Like my music and my my day-to-day life is one and the same. It's not different. I know for a lot of artists, you know, you can separate um, the artist from the human being. But for me, what I speak in my music is what I deal with in my day-to-day life. They're not two different things. <clears throat> So, you know, me growing, I, I like to, I like to showcase that I'm either trying to grow or that I'm growing or even showcase my downfalls and my failures, you know, cause I, I deal with a lot of, you know, I, I, I learn, I'm the type of person where I learn through failure. I don't mind failing because that gives me an inkling or, or where I'm at, you know what I'm saying? If that makes any kind of sense. So yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, um, just doing the shadow work with myself and, and doing the work with me and putting that in my music. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense, man. And I think, you know, um, the the point that you make that I think hits the most is like, you just got to do the work um, yeah, you know, you within do. yourself. You all you always got to put in the work. And when I say put in the work, it's just, it, it's as simple as holding yourself accountable and figuring out what that, what that, what happened and what that solution is and, and moving forward from it. You know, I feel like that's, I think that's the biggest thing about us sometimes is us not wanting to hold ourselves accountable or saying, you know what, I actually was wrong in that situation. Yeah, no, I think that's a that's a big part of it, man. And I don't know, it's, it's something about, you know, just the world we live in today too, where, you know, it's, oftentimes you find that people are like af- afraid to reflect and like have like, um, you know, like some, have, have real conversations with yourself. Like when you look in the mirror, like understand like what you do well, what you aren't doing well, where you fall short, and then being honest with yourself about that. Right, because it was it was times where I, I could look in the mirror and I'll be like, you know what, I'm I'm not liking what I see. I don't like this. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not I'm not okay with that. So how do I go, how do I, how do I change that? How do I fix that? And it's been spaces where it's like I look in the mirror and it's like, damn, I, I love this. I like the I like the path that we are, you know what I'm saying? And we need to, we still gotta put in the work though. We can't lax yeah. right here. Yeah, so no, it's just stuff like that, like just recognizing, like, you know what. I don't like this space. How can I, how can I get from this space? How can I change from this? That's, that's really good. Um, and then, so like, piggybacking off of that, man, like you, you stepped into a space where um, you decided to chase your dreams. Right. And mm-hmm. you know, that's scary. Um, it is. And then when you talk about chasing your dreams in a world that's full of like anxiety and depression and all of that, what advice would you give to somebody who is going out and chasing their dreams but knowing that those things can like be roadblocks for you, like what, what would you tell them to do? You ever seen um, you ever seen that Batman movie with with Bane? Yep. Mm-hmm. You remember when he got dropped down in the hole? I always reference this because it's yeah. exactly how I felt like twenty fifth in the dark of the space, right? So remember when he got dropped down? I think it's Arkham Asylum or something, right? So he got dropped down in the hole and he was trying to escape, but he was always using the rope. Mm-hmm. Old man was like the only, the reason why the the one dude that ever escaped the prison was because he didn't use the rope. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you gotta go through life without the rope because I think the the fear of failing or the fear of hitting the bottom is gonna catapult you to not fail. You know what I'm saying? Or it's gonna mm-hmm. it's gonna get a motivation to be like I have no plan B because I didn't have a plan B. Either I was gonna make it or I was gonna fail drastically. And <laughs> So, you know, I, I, I just feel like sometimes you have to navigate through life without that, that, that safety net, that rope. 
you know, so that the fear can kind of push you to make sure that you're going to do this with your all. You know what I'm saying? You're going to give it a life or death situation type shit. That's huge, man. And I think that's that's a message that I hope that when people watch this, they kind of take back and realize, like, you know, you just got to jump into it like that fear is always going to be there. And you got to embrace that fear because, you know what I mean? Like the people who've been ultra successful and, you know, have really like found or, or succeeded in, in going after their dreams. They didn't even if they had the fear, you don't know it because they jumped right. out and they did it anyways. Right. Sometimes it's all about because sometimes people like they just I just feel like people love to have a plan. And that's cool. It's cool to have a plan. But sometimes you just got to I don't know. It's, it's like a joke in your body where it's just like you just got to you got to do it like fuck it. Because if I talk, if I keep saying I'm on plan or I'm, I can easily talk myself out of the situation yeah. or I can easily talk myself Fuck out of that not- plan just do it yeah no that's that's solid man i love that and uh you know dark knight that's one of my favorite movies both of them so, yeah. yeah so man let's get into you know really what we came here for man like who is loot as a father tell us about your baby girl man and, and what that's like for you honestly man i just feel like fatherhood has like taught me a lot it's, it's taught me patience um i love my daughter my daughter like my best friend that's like my i mean i i like, I feel like without my, if, if my daughter wasn't here, I probably wouldn't be uh, an artist, you know? I feel like my my daughter inspired that joke in me to to have that, to not have that fear and to go through life without that rope. Because when she came, it was just like, I have to figure something out. And I also feel like my daughter being here also gave me a sense of purpose. You know what I'm saying? Because before then, I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. Or, mm-hmm. you know, granted, I'm, I, I'm a high school dropout. You know, the jobs that I'm getting, they I'm either getting fired or they not where I want to be. Mm-hmm. So I'm just hella confused. I ain't no, you know, up from down. So my daughter being here, it's like, okay, now I know I got to be on my shit. And I know I got I to gotta work hard. And now I got to figure this out. And so I feel like my daughter was my motivation. And I know a lot of people be like, dang, he always talking about his daughter in the songs. It's like, well, without my daughter, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even have these songs. I wouldn't even have this, this uh this platform. I wouldn't even be in this situation. I'd be a whole nother, I'd be a whole type, another type of dude if I didn't have a kid right now. Yeah, no, nah, and I think that's that's um those are great points, man. Cause I and I can definitely relate, you know, being a father, you know, I have three kids and I just think back to like you know, life before kids and life now. And I didn't really know what the hell was going on before I had the kids. Like I was just floating through life. Floating, um, bro. Just floating, <laughs> floating through life, man. Just and trying then, to figure out or trying to figure out what what everything really means. And then like when my daughter came, it was just like everything made sense. Yeah. And yeah. So like I, I want you to, to to go back to that because we actually have a moment that we like to talk about with dads, man. So like when you take us back to the moment you found out you were going to become a dad. Like, what were you going through emotionally and physically at that time? Um, so I was at the I was at the airport at the time. I found out I was about to have a kid, and um, I was I was actually happy, you know, like, cause for me, I'm I'm like 24, 23, 24. So for me, it was just like, man, like this is something that I, I actually, you know, been been wanting for myself, but at the same time, I'm not in a space that I want to be. Like, I don't know if this job, if the job that I'm at is going to be able to provide all of that for me. So in a sense, it was like, I'm happy, but I'm also terrified because I'm broke as shit. <laughs> so, so I don't, I don't know how I'm going to make this happen. I'm, I'm broke. I'm excited. It, it was, it was very like, uh, my anxiety was through the roof. Um, First person I told was my mom, though, for sure. And um, but like like I said, I was I was super excited, but also very terrified because I didn't know nothing about fatherhood. Um, I was still trying to uh put together the me and my dad's relationship at the time. So it was just it was super, it was super tough. Mix of emotions. No, I, I oh definitely... yeah, the emotions was hella mixed, man. Hella <laughs> mixed. I definitely feel that. You said about 23, 24, and you what, 31 or so, so now? Yeah. So your, your daughter's what, about seven or eight? So like- Yeah, she's about to be, she about to be eight this year. Okay, no, that's dope. So like her being eight years old, does she understand who you are, what you do? Like, what, what's that like? She do now, like she she do now. And um, 
sometimes I feel like she she the super she feel like she the superstar or whatever. <laughs> but like you know, cause she'll go to she'll go to school and and um you know and and they'll hit me up like hey can you come can you come talk to the kids can you come through mm-hmm. um so she she and and when i anytime i drop a uh, a video she like probably one of the first people to see it because she be on tiktok and 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 youtube and all that stuff so uh she knows what's going on but at the same time i know at some point uh there's going to be a lot of shit that i have to explain and i tell a lot of people all the time where I, I don't do shit that I can't explain because I know at some point she's going to have questions and I want to be able to have those answers to those questions because I know for me, it was times where I had questions for my dad that he didn't have answers to and I want to be able to provide those answers that she needs, especially knowing that it's been times where I, I miss birthdays and it's been times where I've been on the road for months at a time, three months, four months, you know, half a year or you know what I'm saying? So those, I feel like it's going to be times where I have to explain those times and those moments. And I want to be able to provide those answers to. Yeah, no, I, th- I think that's great, man. And I think you, just your your outlook and your thought process about, you know, wanting to be transparent and wanting to be able to explain those moments, I think will be big for um, her growth, but then also you guys' relationship, you know, as she gets older, because then she'll know, like, if I ask my dad something, he's not just going to go send me off and not give me an answer. He's going to tell yeah. me what it was. Yeah. Like, no, nah, I definitely just want to, I want her to be able to have that closure or, to any questions or whatever that she has and, and not have to go through life thinking like, or have questions of like, you know, whatever it is she's thinking. I don't, I don't know how she's going to process mm-hmm. uh, certain things, but I, I want to be able to have and be able to sit down and have those conversations with her when she get older and she have those questions and I, and I can be able to tell her, you know? Yeah. So then my, my question, my next question regarding that though is, man, like, look, you've been, um, you know, really successful so far. And I'm sure that you want, you know, much more out of your career. And, you know, the field that you're in is very demanding. It requires you to be on the road, traveling, touring, you know what I mean? Like doing different things. And your daughter might be based, cause I, I, I read that like a, you were in, I think on the West Coast in LA during the pandemic and she mm-hmm. was back East and like, you know, nobody was moving around. So you, there's all this space. So how, how do you balance, you know what I mean? Like your career, and being a fatherhood, how do you handle that? It's still tough. Um, it's still trying. I'm still trying to navigate that and figure that out because sometimes you get in a space where uh, I get in a space where my daughter doesn't understand um, my career and my career to understand that I'm a dad. Because <laughs> it be times where people need me to be here, 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 and it's like that's cool, but I need to set up this, that, and the third, like, you got to tell me ahead of time. Because some people, it was sometimes where I would get information and it'd be, like, like direct, and, and it'd be, like, ASAP. And it's like, I, I can't I can't move like that. Because there was a point in time where, you know, I, I had my daughter full time, and it's like, I can't I can't navigate like that. You got to give me a heads up, because I got to figure out who going to watch her or how long I'm going to be gone. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I got like, to factor all these things in. And it was a time and space where, both sides didn't really understand each other. Now that my daughter's getting older and people, and, I, and I'm navigating more into the industry and people are more aware that, you know, I, I, I am a dad or that I do um, need a heads up. And my daughter is more aware that, oh, okay, this, this is what, uh, what dad do. And, you know, and the reasons why he has to be gone at a, for a certain amount of time. So it's, it's getting easier, but it's still hard, it's still tough. Yeah, it uh, makes a lot of sense. Go ahead, Jesse. Nah, man, that, that's dope that you, you know, figuring it out along the way, man. And even to that point of, you know, your field being so demanding, right? There's other guys on Dreamville with kids. Cole, I think Boss got kids. I'm not sure right. if Kaz or anybody else does. But, like, what's that like, man? I know y'all, you know, sit around, talk about life. Like, y'all ever just chopping up on fatherhood? To see, like, everybody's kids, like, like to, to uh, because Omen has a kid, and it's like, you know, to see everybody's kids and, and, and see them growing and where they were when, you know, and when everybody found out, you know, at a point where it's like, oh, shit, I'm about to be a dad. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's really dope. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, everybody has their own perspectives because some of us have daughters, some of us have sons. And to get everybody's perspective, it's like, it's, it's really dope. You know, fatherhood, I was telling my homeboy not too long ago, like fatherhood is like really special. You know what I'm saying? Because... I don't know. It's just it's 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 just super special. Yeah. Do you have the oldest kid out the out the Dreamville group or? I think I, okay. I think I, 
the oldest kid, yeah. They ever look to you like big bro, like coming to you for advice, <laughs> you know? It was, it was a couple years ago where people was like, yo, how, so how is it, how does it feel being a dad or like, you know, asking questions and stuff like that. But I think everybody pretty much got it figured out and down pat. Cause I, I feel like, especially with certain upbringings, once you have a kid, you kind of, you, you, you kind of step in, in, in the mold that you need to, that you need to be in to provide, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, that's solid, man. And even to that point, when it comes to like providing and providing tools and things of that nature, and one of your songs, you said, I told my daughter, if she falls, it's cool. Just get back on your feet. I'm here. I'm here to give you all the tools. Then my life is complete. So like with that lyric, man, like what are maybe like t your top three tools that you want to instill in your daughter as she's, you know, on her journey into becoming a, like a, a young woman? But my, what my mom instilled in me, like we all have this big perspective, uh, perspective that um failure is a bad thing and it's like it's not failure is not a bad thing and it's also like how can i explain it um so you know like let's say you're 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 a fighter or whatever right and you you always used to being number one and then you get that one loss you get that one that one knockout somebody knock you out and you don't know how to bounce back from that because you ain't never failed in your life type shit. you know what i'm saying so me, I'm the type of person where I learn through my failures. And when I get that win, it's like I, I never lost. So I want to instill in my daughter that it's, it's okay to fail. You learn and failing. Like failing is okay. Just make sure that you're learning from your failures so that your failures don't go in vain. Mm. You no, know, it's okay to it's okay to dust yourself off because we all we all gonna fall at some point. But it's it's about getting back up and and still having that that fight to keep fighting. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, and it's something that I tell my kids, like, you know, to me, failure is not really real unless you don't learn anything from it. You right. know what I mean? So it's like, we're all going to, we're going to swing. Like, you know, if you go back to your fighting analogy, only Floyd Mayweather's, you know, been out here and not lost. Everybody else has caught an L at some point. So like, take those L's and learn from them along the way. If you don't learn from them, then it's really a failure. If you learn from it, it's not really a failure. So it's a lesson for you at the end of the day. For sure. Yo, so um, we have this special segment, man, and I think this would be really dope, you know, considering, um, you know, how you were trying to heal your relationship with your father over the years and then um, having, you know, having lost him recently. But um, if you could write a letter to your father, starting with dear father, what would you say? Um, man, that's deep. Uh, damn. I would say... Oh man. Be like, dear father, um, ah oh, man, I to be honest, I, I can't even I can't even answer that at, on the spot to be real. Yeah. Cause honestly, I'm that shit hell. I I'm my my dad's birthday is uh coming up soon as well. Mm. So I, I've honestly been feeling, I've been feeling mad motions with like, you know, the, his birthday coming up and uh, the success that I've been kind of dealing with lately and, uh, and, and, and the things that I've been achieving. And honestly, it's like when my pops passed, I almost felt like he gave me a certain type of energy where it was like, it almost felt like, you know, maybe I didn't give you the tools that 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 you had when I was alive, but I'm giving you this push to of strength. I don't, it was so weird when my when my dad passed, I felt like he gave me some this weird ass uh sense of strength mm. of like moving forward and and I I felt like I let go of that fear. Whatever that fear was that I had before, I felt like he Somewhere he gave me this this sense of losing my fear and the sense of all right I'm a, I'm gonna push you forward yeah. type thing. I felt like ever since like I don't I don't know man I, I can't explain that shit but nah man it it it's, it sounds really deep bro um yeah. and you know I, I think that you know what I hear from that is like gratitude from you and your pops leaving that with you so like to me it just sounds like dear father thank you you know what I mean because he gave you that. Honestly, to be real, it, it is because I know uh, sometimes when you tell people like, "Oh, my father wasn't around," uh, they 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 automatically think like, "Oh, you know." But like, it's like my dad was my hero growing up, even though he wasn't as uh, around as much as he 
as much as I would like him to be, he was still a hero to me. You know what I'm saying? And we, and me and my dad, we had our differences and, and it was times where I had to hold him accountable. All those times where, you know, certain things probably went a little too far between the both of us, but mm-hmm. I still love my dad because it's my dad. It's my, that's my identity. And mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm a junior, so I've shared his name. So for me, you know, mm-hmm. everything that I did was to, I got to do it better than my dad. My dad was well known in, in his community. So for me, it's like seeing him, uh, talk to people and how people looked up to him it's like damn i want to be that but i want to be better than that like i want to i want you know what i'm saying i don't know yeah. it's man it's a lot to unpack man no, for, for sure. and we appreciate your transparency you know those letters mm-hmm. sometimes go smooth for people other times it's it's a lot it's, yeah it's, you know it's a lot you know of... why because I, I feel like i'm still writing that letter mm. that's, yeah. and that's you know okay. what i'm saying i feel like i'm still writing that letter man and but i, I not a, but but you saying that though, it kind of put some put something in my head though. Like uh, that's that's yeah. Maybe that's a song for the next album, right? Man, I, I think you might you might have, bro. You might, <laughs> you might, you might have sparked the song in your boy. Yeah, no, nah, that's solid, man. And we definitely, you know, this episode is super impactful for me because, like I said in the beginning of the conversation, I really got to dive into your music recently, and I related a lot to, you know, the things that you talk about from, you know, just uh, being an introvert, you know, you know, battling with anxiety, battling with depression. So I I love that you were able to come on here and just kind of give insight into who you are as a black man. You know what it is, honestly, because I feel like people see me as being an artist and they see me in a a certain space. So they think that I haven't figured out when honestly uh, in my music, I'm, I'm just letting everybody know I'm still figuring this shit out. I'm still mm-hmm. figuring out how to be a dad. I'm still figuring out how to navigate, how to navigate through this industry as an artist. Mm-hmm. I'm still healing with mm-hmm. my my dad's passing, my grandma's passing. I, I'm still healing. You know, yeah. I'm still figuring all this shit out. So yeah. I, I, I feel like me being transparent is also helping me heal and helping me as a as an artist and a, and a human being. But it's like, I feel like my message is to let everybody know, like, yo, I'm still figuring this shit out like everybody else. Like, I don't have this shit figured out, yeah. you know? And I, I love that, man, because for me, one thing that I struggle with, I don't do music, right? So I'm an introvert. I'm pretty closed off. Like, I got my small circle. I don't really talk too much on social media. Uh-huh. My therapy is this platform, like the things that I involve myself in and having conversations like this or having a mental health space, right. that's me saying, I still ain't figured this shit out. So (laughs) these are the things that I'm putting out here. So like, I kind of can relate to that as well. My thing is in music, but creating this platform was letting people know like, hey, I don't got it figured out. Here's my, you know, way to, you know, showcase that. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, I feel like music was my therapist before I knew therapist or therapy was an option. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. before the therapy and before I even knew what anxiety was, I felt like my music, you know, me telling me, me speaking my truth for how I feel and, and, or how I feel in that moment, you know, I, I put that all in my music because music sometimes when I didn't have people to talk to, uh, d- music was my, was that person for me. Yeah, no, I, I definitely feel that. And even to that point, uh, your latest video, the out of eye video, that, that was solid, man. Like with the, uh, the therapy that. sessions in there, man, uh, yeah. it was dope, man. So no, nah, man, we definitely appreciate your time today. Appreciate your transparency, man. Like, no, I appreciate y'all for real. We definitely rocking with you moving forward. So before we get out of here, man, like go ahead and tell us top five rappers dead or alive, man. We already know one uh, of them. My so. top five. All right, so you already know it's ODB, mm-hmm. Andre, um, ODB, Andre, uh, um, Biggie, mm-hmm. Lupe Fiasco. Cause nobody, nobody ever mentions Lupe in no top nothing. I don't, I just, I don't understand it. I don't get it. And um, CeeLo Green, and I, I, and I, I'm gonna tell you why. Because CeeLo is probably the most like. Uh, I feel like CeeLo can do almost anything, and, and CeeLo is also one of those dudes where I felt like, cause I, I'm also a big uh, Goody Mob fan. And yeah. I, I feel like CeeLo was like the most, he was like the the chameleon out of out of out of all of them. He could sing, he could rap, he could do all that shit. He Super was very talented. like very much himself as well. So I appreciate people that are are, are themselves. Like I look up to them a, a lot more. That's really dope, bro. Um, and I think I don't know if you've ever done it 
But, you know, I'm putting it out there that you and the Dudgeon family, y'all need to collaborate at some point. Bro, I would love to. Uh, shit, that'll be a dream of mine. Yeah, like, man. I, that'll be a dream of mine for real. Now, that's really dope, bro. So, look, man, I know we're taking up a lot of your time, but we want to kind of wrap. So, you know, tell the people how they can follow you on social media and what's next for you, bro. Um, I'm Luke Westline on all platforms. And as far as what's next for me, I'm I'm really just trying to tap into um, continuing to learn myself and push myself to do whatever it is that's next for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, whether that's music or diving into something new figuring something else because i'm in a space where in my life now where i want to do something new that i didn't know i could do mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying i want to i want to discover that talent that i didn't know that i even that, that i had and 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 dive into that a little more as well but i definitely got more music coming um i got more i got more i got more stuff coming musically i'm just really in a space now where i'm just trying to learn myself and get better at learning myself so that I can, I can be a better artist. And, and I, cause for me, I, I just want to be a better artist. I want to, I want to be a better performer. I want to be, you know, so I'm just trying to figure myself out and again, knock down those barriers of anxiety and fear so that I can step into my light. Now that, that's super dope, bro. And you know, on our side, man, like we said, man, we big fans. So we pulling for you. Um, you know, we, uh, we wishing you all the success, you know, as an artist and as a man and as a father, man, and, you know, keep, you know, working on yourself and your mental health. And, you know, for us, like, we love tapping in with you. And if we can ever get you on, you know, any of our other, uh, segments where we talk about straight mental and things like that, man, we'd love to have you just talk deeper about mental health. Platform, like this shit's fire. And I I appreciate y'all. For Definitely, sure. man. Appreciate you. This was therapeutic for me today. So nah, <laughs> for, for real, Sorry, man. I appreciate y'all. I'm Aya Tometi. I'm sure you've heard the saying, but it really does take a village. That's why I chose Kinley, a financial services company proudly built for Black America. Together, we create solutions. Go to B-E-K-I-N-L-Y dot com to download the app today. Standard data rates from your wireless service provider may apply. The Kinley Deposit Account is established by Central Bank of Kansas City. Member FDIC. The Kinley Visa Debit Card is issued by Central Bank of Kansas City. Consult the deposit account agreement and fee schedule for complete details. Time is money and I'm working on that Richard Mill. It's up to me to drop the ball like I'm finna...